Hi, right, it's time for another math easy solution. Uh, turn discuss further into polar coordinates and now look further into area of polar curves and look at example two this time, which will deal with uh, finding the area in uh, between a cardioid and a circle. This is a pretty interesting example, so buckle up. So example says find the area of the region that lies inside the circle R equals to 3 sine theta and outside the cardioid R equals 1 plus sine theta and this is a uh, this cardioid is just a Greek for heart and I've graphed those in my earlier videos so check those out. Yeah, so let's just go and look at the solution or start solving it. Basically the cardioid, and again you could see my earlier video polar coordinates example 7 where I uh, graphed this exact one r equals 1 plus sine theta and now we'll, uh, and also basically the, the solution yeah, the cardioid is shown here, I've graphed it as well as the circle so this one is actually, yeah, circle r equals r sine theta and I just used the Desmos calculator so you could check that out, this is the circle in red and this is the uh, cardioid in blue right there now we are asked to solve for the area that lies inside the circle and outside the cardioid. So inside and outside. So inside the circle, but outside of this. So that's going to be, well, this area over here, because that's inside the circle, but it's outside this cardioid, like that. So this is the area we want to solve. So to solve this, what we need to do is, well, we need to find the points in which the cardioid and circle uh, intersect and that's at well these points here and this is a polar curve so that's a polar axis so what we want to do is find this angle right here and I'll call this theta 1 and now we also want to find this angle across that's going to be theta 2 so we want to solve for those points and those are when they intersect in other words we could set the circle equaling to the cardioid so what we'll do is let uh, let basically 3 sine theta, which is the circle, equals to 1 plus, and then it was just sine, uh, sine theta for the cardioid. So now we could just start solving this, move this over, that's just subtracting a sine, so we get 2 sine theta equals to 1, in other words we get sine theta equals to 1 over 2. So now we got to solve for when sine theta equals 1 over 2, and uh, that yeah for what f uh, theta values that those are and we could do uh, do so by first recalling a good way to memorize these uh, exact trig ratios is by drawing a whenever you're dealing dealing with this sine where it's one over two like that you could draw a triangle or an isosceles triangle that has sides two two and then this is all two as well so split that in half so one and one so that this is a triangle, all the sides are equal and they're all going to be uh, 60 degrees or pi over 3 so they all add up to 180 or adds up to pi like that so then this one's going to be well in half so pi over 6 and this is going to be pi over 6 and now this length right here is uh, square root 3 and we'll use that uh, later on, so that's why I'll just type that or write that in right there and that is again by, by Pythagoras square root 3 plus 1 squared, so these ones squared, this equals 2, that just cancels, so we're left with 3 plus 1, this equals to 4, which is the same thing as writing, well, 2 squared, which is the hypotenuse right there, so in other words, this right here, just a refresher, that is just uh, Pythagoras, I'll just write, yeah, this is the Pythagorean theorem, yeah, theorem like that. Yeah, so now that we have that, we could just uh, plug in this uh, this ratio. That's one over two. Number sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so that's going to be pi over six right there. So basically, sine pi over six equals to one over two, and there is our first angle. This is actually going to be now theta one equals to pi over six. Now this is within pi over 2 right here, so that's, if I do this, that's pi over 2, that's 90 degrees, so this equals to pi over 6, and then you could use just, uh, yeah, for this angle all the way across, this is by symmetry, that's actually, 
Yeah, going to be yeah. You could that's going to be the exact same one here, but you got to move it over. But uh, and I'll show you what I mean. That's just in the second quadrant. So if you were to graph this in the first quadrant like that, this is one over two. This is pi. Yeah, this is pi over six. In the second quadrant, remember that is the same over here because this is positive. That's going to be two. This is going to be pi over 6 exactly that, that from there to there. So we want this angle all the way across there. And that angle is just going to be, well, pi minus pi over 6, which is just 6 over 6 minus pi. That equals to, well, 5 pi over 6. And this is our second angle. So that is theta 2 equals 5 pi over 6. So this equals to 5 pi over 6. So now we have our two points over there. Actually, I made a mistake over there. This one is actually, this is just the same thing. This is uh, theta 1. This is our angle, theta 2. Yeah, it's, so we start off from this polar axis. That equals to 5 pi over 6, like that. And the theta 1 is the same on both sides there, with the exact values there, because of symmetry. Yeah, and thus, now we could start solving this area by recalling the area formula. So the area can be obtained by subtracting the area inside the cardioid uh, from theta is pi over 6 to theta pi over uh, 5 pi over 6 from the area inside the circle from, again, the same points, pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6. So first of all, recall the area of yeah, the area formula equals to, this is area of a polar curve, equals to integral from A to B of 1 half R squared D theta. So in our case, because we're, we're going to be subtracting, so we're going to have area of the uh, circle. So this full area of circle, we're going we're gonna to subtract uh, from it uh, this area of a cardioid over there. So what we get is area is going to be integral from, uh, this is going to be pi over 6 all the way to 5 pi over 6. And this is going to be 3 sine of theta, that's the circle, squared. And there's going to be a 1 half over there. And then d theta, and then subtracted by 1 half integral from uh, pi over 6 like that to 5 pi over 6 and now we have this 1 plus sine theta squared d theta. And now to simplify it because we don't want to deal with 5 pi over 6 uh, this is symmetric so by symmetry remember by symmetry you could even just look above here it's symmetric about this pi over 2 or 90 degrees like that so that is symmetric uh, like that, symmetry about the vertical axis. So thus all we need to do is find this area, this half of this area on the right that is multiplied by 2. So we could just go from integral from pi over 6 to pi over 2 over there. So by symmetry area equals to this and we'll also simplify all that. It's going to be 2 times this entire thing. So 1 half and now square that and then the integral is going to be from pi over 6 to pi over 2 and circle this just to show you now by symmetry we go over there instead of 5 pi over 6 so now we can square that that's going to be 9 sine squared theta d theta subtract this by 1 half integral five, uh, pi over 6 5 pi over 6 and I'll just put an arrow like that just to separate them and now we have this if you uh, if you evaluate this expand that that's going to be 1 times 1 is 1 plus 1 times sine is sine theta and then sine theta times 1 is sine theta so we get 2 sine theta and then sine theta times sine theta sine theta squared so we're just foiling it by expanding or expanding by foil method so now that we have that and then this is all again multiplied by 2. So we can multiply the 2 inside, cancels this and this, and we can combine these. They're the same uh, terms we're evaluating them from pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6. Actually, this one, uh, whoops, this is pi over 2. Yeah, like that. So we're going to evaluate from the same one. We can add these 
together this equals to the integral from five I know from pi over six all the way to pi over two. Combine these. So we have this nine sine squared. This one's a sine squared we're going to be subtracting. So we get a eight sine squared theta. Then we just subtract by one here. That Because of the twos cancels, we're just going to be subtracting by one. And now we have here subtracted by two sine, yes, yeah, sine theta, like that, d theta. And now the next step is, well, we want to simplify the squared because it's a harder to uh, evaluate integral. So recall the half angle trig identity. I'll uh, write trig identity like this. This is the half angle. I'll put the proof in the video description below. Sine squared theta equals to one half of one minus cosine two theta like that. Or it's basically uh, you have this theta as half of this two theta like that. So we recall that, we could throw that inside there and what we end up having is uh, area so area equals 2 integral from, five, from pi over 6 to pi over 2 and now we have a 8 times it by 1 over 2 I'll put this bracket, now we have this 1 minus cosine 2 theta and then we just subtract by 1 subtract by 2 sine theta d theta and now we could just start uh, simplifying this, this cancels, this is going to be well 4 so we're going to have pi over 6 pi over 2 and now we're integrating it, we're going to multiply that in, so 4 then minus, so we're going to have 4, but then there's a minus 1 there so we just might put it as right here 3 so just simplifying it further 3 minus now we have 4 cosine 2 theta and now we have this minus 1 that was already taken into account so 4 minus 1 is 3 now we have this negative 2 sine theta like that okay and now we could start solving this Okay, so now we could evaluate this. This equals to uh, the integral of, of 3 in terms of theta. That's just going to be, well, 3 theta. Now minus right here, integral is going to be cosine. Actually, it's going to be sine. The antiderivative is sine 2 theta. There's a 4 there. Now we have to uh, divide by 2 right here. So that when you take in, in a derivative of sine 2 theta, it's going to be cosine 2 theta times by 2 by chain rule. So we have this. And then we're going to have, yeah, right here, the integral of sine. That's going to be, well, cosine. Uh, it's going to be negative cosine theta. And there's a 2 there for the constant. So the derivative of cosine theta is just negative sine theta. So that's what we have. And this is evaluating it from pi over 6 to pi over 2. And now those cancel left with 2 like that. So this equals 2 and when we evaluate this inside we get this uh, 3 times 3 times pi over 2 uh, subtracted by 2 sine now we have this 2 pi over 2 so this cancels we're just left with pi plus 2 cosine uh, cosine pi over 2 and then we have to subtract this all, put this pi over 6 inside, so 3 pi over 6 minus, or actually put the bracket around, minus 2 sine 2 pi over 6. This cancels, we're left with a 3 instead, so pi over 3, plus 2 cosine uh, theta, put that in, pi over 6, like that. We just remove this extra bracket. So what we need to uh, find out is sine pi, cosine pi over 2, as well as sine pi over 3, and cosine pi over 6. And we already know this one, the pi over 3 and pi over 6, is from this right here. So pi over 3 and pi over 6, so we want to know what sine of... Yes, sine pi over 3. This equals to, well, opposite over hypotenuse equals square root 3 over 2. And now cosine of pi over 6 equals to uh, adjacent over hypotenuse. So square root 3 
over two. So square root three over two. So these are the exact same right there. So if we go down towards here, that's pi over six, and this one's sine, this is minus two, plus two, and these are the exact same. So then these approach zero. So because this one we end up having is we have negative two times square root three over two plus two times square root three over two. This equals to all zero. So that just all vanishes to zero. And now we need to know these two values over there. And you could also recall, yeah, recall the sine and cosine functions, how they look like. So theta, I'll write y here. So this is a sine function, sine theta. So y equals sine theta. And this is at, we want to know at pi. That's right here. That's a 0. So that's at pi. And this goes to 0. Let's put a better arrow. So 0. And now the cosine pi over 2, remember, it looks something like this. And then it goes up like that, and this goes back. So this one is our y equals to cosine theta curve. And this is at pi over 2. That's also equals to 0. So this goes to 0. So all we're left with that's not 0 is this and this. So what we end up having is finally just a lot of tedious. Uh, writing. So now 3 pi over 2 subtracted by 3 pi over 6. Yes, yeah, so write that down. Area is equal to 3 pi over 2 minus 3 pi over 6. Now this simplifies, so this one's going to be 2. That just cancels. 3 over 6, same thing as 1 over 2. So this equals to 3 pi over 2 minus 1 over 2 pi. This means, well, we could, the same common denominator, we could just, just subtract. This equals to 2 pi. Uh, yeah, this is going to be yeah, just 2 pi over 2 pi. So 3 pi over 2 minus uh, half pi. That's just going to be 2 pi. Now this remove that extra pi. So this cancels, and now we're just left with pi. So area equals to pi. So <laughs> very convenient right there. So area is equal to pi. And uh, yeah, that's all for today. It's pretty interesting. Again, play around with this calculator. It's pretty amazing. So you have this equals to pi. So the difference between these two uh, curves in the area is exactly pi. Very amazing stuff. So yeah, that is all for today. Hopefully you followed along. And uh, yeah, it's pretty extensive, uh, detailed uh, uh, example video. But yeah, follow along. It's pretty interesting. Anyways, thanks for watching. And like always, you can download these exact notes in the video link below in the description, as well as you could view these exact notes at Steemit. I'll upload these shortly after I upload this video. Anyways, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for another math easy solution.